Hello, my name is Martyr, and this is Let's Play Read Only Memories, and thank you for watching. Read Only Memories is a hybrid of visual novel and point and click adventure style gameplay, guys, but instead of the usual, you know, anime style or shiny boobs, let's just be honest here, uh, in this game we got really awesome pixel artwork, guys, and an amazing soundtrack to boot, guys. The music is just like this techno 80s pop vibe to it all. And it really just, it gets my heart going. I really like it. Um, and I just, I can't underline how, enough how much I enjoy the music in this game, guys. The game takes place in Neo San Francisco, a cyberpunk style city with loads of interesting characters, a lot of crazy factions and events going on. Imagine Shadowrun with a, like a little bit of a lighter tone, guys. And if it were purely, obviously, a visual novel style game, guys. Read Only Memory released on Steam October 2015. It was developed and published by Midboss. You can go ahead and get Read Only Memories on Steam, Itch.io, and a bunch of other places for $14.99, guys. Now, there really isn't much to speak of as far as options go um, and frivolous stuff like that. The game does feature Steam achievements. Um, no Steam cards yet. That might be something that changes in the future. But as you can see right here, really, there's really not much uh, to you know the, the 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 you know options menu as it were. So there's not even going to be an annotation up there because that's basically it. Uh, the game does say it features full controller support. I think it's partial controller support. I mean, I can kind of move the cursor around with my controller, but it doesn't let me hit any buttons. So again, I'm going to say probably uh, partial controller support. Now, this is the type of game that's completely based off of its story off of its its atmosphere. So I'm starting a new game instead of hitting continue. And I've actually I've been playing the game for about an hour or so now. So I'm actually a little bit, I'm pretty far away from the beginning. But it's a game that definitely is going to show you its 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 tricks, not tricks, but it's gonna show you its face in the first, you know, three minutes of the game. And then the rest of its story, it's all building up. It's just showing you more of this awesome universe, guys. And I think it really does a good job of showing you what you're going to expect from this game. So we're going to start from the beginning uh, just to show you that. But again, if you have any plans playing this game, I encourage you, go ahead and play this game. Don't watch this video because I'm going to be spoiling at least you know, the first 20, 30 minutes of the game, guys. So I'm going to shut up now. Okay, well, I'll shut up after they get through this. <laughs> Neo San Francisco, 2064 AD. The world is on the cusp of not one, but three technological singularities. Cybernetic augmentation and genetic modification allow the repair and enhancement of almost any part of a human body. Millions of people jack into virtual worlds every day to work, play, and connect with one another with advanced brain-to-machine technology. Easier access to genetic modification leaves hybrids walking the streets, looking less human every day. Relationship organizational managers, or ROMs for short, are the commonplace companion and tool of any modern person. However, they are still machines at their core. The logic they are built on impedes their ability to think for themselves and determine their own behavior. Right. You see, this is at the heart of why we took on this merger with Parallax. We wanted to take artificial intelligence to the next level. And now, well, we have devices that can truly adapt. Organizations like the Human Revolution seek to slow the relentless pace of progress, fearing that unchecked technology will make us lose the very things that make us human. High above the rising tension below, a parallax engineer buries himself in schematics and equations, trying to bring a new kind of life into the world. And with this, humanity's destiny will be altered forever. <clears throat> Ironically enough, you actually don't play that scientist, uh, which was kind of confusing when I first started the game off. I'm like, so am I the scientist? No, you're not. You're the scientist friend. <laughs> uh, but you'll see what I mean in a bit here. Pretty 
prologue. So, I mean, already, if anything, you've already gotten a really good taste of what the atmosphere, what the flavor of this game is like. This is essentially what Read Only Memories is going to present to you, this fantastical universe, really awesome art style, fantastic voice work, um, and it's just a game that's very rich with, you know, its atmosphere as far as game, as far as the graphics go. Gameplay-wise, it's a very simplistic game, all in all, actually. For the most part, like I said, it's, it's mostly, you know, point-and-click style game. Okay, maybe not so sweet. Of course, it's a visual analysis. There's also going to be a lot of reading. Musty might be a better descriptor. So now we can kind of click around in the environment. And again, this is all very reminiscent of... Uh, other point and click style games, there's lots of different things you can click on, like for instance, we'll look at the fridge. The video screens on the front says, mustard, half full, spoiled milk, 10 days past expired. Well, I want to take that spoiled milk, why not? You open the fridge to see a bottle of mustard and a carton of spoiled milk, milk which has developed an odor. And spoiled milk has one more good day on it, maybe. Take milk! Why? Because why not? It's an adventure style game. If you see something, you want to take it, damn it. And of course, you can examine, talk to, or grab items. That's basically what this is. And all in all, this minimalistic UI you're looking at right here is the entire game. You're kind of going to always be looking at things through kind of like this square perspective, uh, flipping through items with this particular menu system. You can also access uh, the menu screen here, which allows you to save and the options and all that good kind of jazz, uh, if you so choose. And like I said, it's pretty neat and pretty interesting looking. I like I said, the game's graph the pixel art is really awesome looking. So let's look at the sink here. You know exactly what that ooze is, only that it seems to be growing. Talk to the ooze. You try talking to the sink, but it gives you the cold shoulder. How rude. Is that a Star Wars joke? How rude. I think it is. Turn on sink. Running water might just make it worse. Or we can use items on some objects, like for instance, the sink. We'll use um, our spoiled milk. No way. You can't possibly imagine the indescribable, inhumane horrors you're about to unleash onto the world. <laughs> or the stank. So you get the basic idea. Uh, things are just kind of... Everything has, of course, a description to it. It's all very humorful, and, you know, it has a good humor about it. Your friend Hayden gave this to you. The group is old, but the music's timeless. That's what he said, at least. So let's take the poster. Careful. That's a load-bearing poster. Let's talk to the poster. It might feel less silly talking to this if it had a por portrait of the band on it or something. So as you can imagine, we are we play a, uh, I think he's a reporter, um, who's not really good at being a reporter, let's be brutally honest. Let's turn on, boot up Lappy here. Now I'm going to kind of just skip through some things here. Lappy's a bit of a relic. You have an article due tonight, better finish it before bed. Okay, so actually I just realized before we do that, we need to uh, get the headset. There we go. We need that. That's what we need. To, there are the GX Ultra Beats you need to write a review for. Guess now is as good as time as I need to get to work. There are smart headphones. She will use them with some things lying around your apartment. So for instance, if we use the headphones on the sink, you can hear the sink gurgling in high, def high definition. Let's listen to uh, the poster. See, uh, that's uh, really cool things like that. I, th I think that's a really, uh, adds a lot of atmosphere to the game. No, don't listen. It's not a good vibe. Let's talk to the plant. They say plants react positively to conversation, but this poor thing might be too far gone already. So anyways, you get the basic idea. There's a lot of things you can interact with, and I'm not going to interact with all of them. But, you know, I will say that interacting with the, um, the, 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 the spoiled milk is hilarious. Spoiled milk and old coffee. Yum. You stick a sip of the old stale coffee, layers F and K seem clear as day. It's also really gross. So like I said, I'm going to skip some things here because there's, I kind of want to get to the, the nitty gritty of things, but you're more than welcome, of course, to explore, click on items, and, you know, combine items, as many items as you can here. There's a lot of uh, richness to the universe here. There's a lot of text here for you to enjoy and read. I'm just going to go ahead and um, just kind of move the story along. You turn on the GX Ultra Beats and they sync automatically as you start to watch one of those less pornographic feeds. Your best options are usually limited to video game feeds, old concert recordings, and streams of baby animals. Your choice is clear. Lappy speakers feel neglected, but you're glad that the first part of your work is finished. You're so accomplished. And now we'll go ahead and write up that article. Alright, time to get your work out of the way. Let's do this. 
Selling your soul, bit by bit, character by character. Finished. Now I have to send it off to the editor, which he does automatically. There, your big break. Sure, your glowing review of GX Ultra Beats is your ticket out of poverty and into a book deal. Surely. Work is finally out of the way. Time for bed. First, log out. Or you could read some OK Today and catch up on some real news before you sleep. All right, well, then we'll do that then. Perhaps it'll f somehow further the plot. Let's see. A story about the human revolution. Well, let's read that. Human revolution remains vigilant in stay human movement. December 19th, the human revolution is on day 10 of their protest, protesting outside various genus buildings around the city, including those in the East Bay and down the peninsula. Genus, the gene splicing treatment facility, has been met with much controversy since the organization reached out mainstream exposure last year. Genus employee Mort Crane spoke to OK Today exclusively. According to him, most genus workers are up in arms, claiming they've been terrorized, they're being terrorized in their own city. We're here to help people who need gene therapy for their own personal reasons, whatever they are, said Crane. Individual rights have always been of paramount importance to us, he continued, and we believe that our customers have the right to live as they please or require. The human revolution stands behind their claim that genus is diluting the human experience by providing hybrids with gene splicing treatments. The group feels that the goals stated by Genius, in addition to newer cybernetic technologies, are warping humanity into a very scary, dark future. They're playing God in the most senseless of ways. We were born human. Who are we to mess with our own genes and start turning everybody into who knows what, said one protester who asked to remain anonymous. It's ridic ridiculous and scary. It's not human. More information on the follow case. You get the basic idea. Lots of, you know, universe building Stuff that's going to be very important for you to read, obviously. Like, this one's very important. Golden Cake Park Vandalism on the Rise. December 19th, reports show the local food attraction JJ's Froyo Stand was destroyed last night in what appears to be another case of a rogue rom committing an act of vandalism. The car was ev ev evidently attacked and damaged by a larger rom that had no shell. Witnesses state that the alleged perpetrator has been randomly appearing at night before lumbering back into the nearby park forest. This is the first case of Rom being reported to live on its own on its own in the wild. As a stray, police say that, that tracking down a potential owner of the Rom is unlikely impossible. Some speculate that its strange Rom may have been framed by vandals who set their crime deliberately to make it appear to have been carried out by the Rom, rogue or rogue or under, under orders. Okay, today I reached out to Parallax for comment, and they assured us that the rogue Rom is purely a myth that tends to pop up conveniently when low revenue businesses have the urge to file an insurance claim. Parallax does not appreciate the reports of vandalism being attributed to their models. Is this wild rom the real deal, or could it be a fairy tale created by those looking to make a quick buck? Or perhaps there's something else to be gained. More as this story progresses. So we're going to log out now. Very interesting stuff there. We're not going to go outside, because apparently he doesn't want to go outside. You will eventually get to name your character. Hopefully we'll get to that. Despite the smell, cute the window open better not have gross air than no air. Uh, let's talk to the window. There's no one out there. Let's let's use a let's use this. Don't throw your new headphones out there. There's there may <laughs> this may be a moderately safe neighborhood, but those will be gone in ten minutes if you leave them out. All right. We're talking to the bed now. Apparently, this bed only chats back when you're sleep talking. It's not the most well designed function. Let's go to sleep, and then some craziness is gonna start, of course. Whoa. Ah, good. You're finally awake. I'm honestly not sure why most humans still have such lengthy, lengthy, lengthy sleep cycles. Are you that significantly opposed to cybernetic Ackmans? What? How did you get into my apartment? Again, this is multiple choices where the kind of that, you know, that arcing thing where gameplay can be kind of replayed and you might have different decisions, different things might happen, it's not always going to be the same depending on how you answer things. How'd you get in my apartment? I came in through the front door. This, the cryptographic algorithms it uses are actually quite abysmal. It only took me 17 trillion clock cycles to break your entry code. It looks rather imposing, but it's actually a knockoff of the secure gate M14723-B. So the... what? I knew my landlord was full of it when he, when he said it was the best! 
Don't feel too bad. I actually cheated a bit when I cross-referenced known significant numer numeric codes against the stored personal data on you. I'm not certain why you picked the birthday of your first dog, but it was sufficiently obscure to defeat most casual attempts to enter. Frankly, I felt a little silly that I took the time to do it once I realized that the lock, the lock on your window is broken. And that you left it open. You know my dog's birthday? Honestly, it would have taken me longer if I had to enter the codes manually, but it was trivial to slice through the door's firewall and try against, against, uh, try against the store data directly. I would suggest investing in an NICEF model 1355. The 1385 is newer, but I find the added attack vector introduced by the voice controls isn't worth the convenience. I don't know what the hell he's talking about. That was over 300 five-star reviews on Congo. What are you doing in my apartment? I hope you still don't mind while you were asleep. I had some spare time on my hands. So I reorganized your records and entertained, entertained me to using BISAC. Once this was done, I found the cleansiness of your living room and workspace to be suboptimal conditions for the long-term performance of my uh, micro-actuators. So I took my liberty of cleaning the place up a bit. Also, you, as you woke, I was attempting to interface and make performance adjustments to your personal computer, but I've run into a bit of a snag. A snag? Unfortunately, your motherboard seems to have broken down in some way while I was attempting to remove some particularly nasty malware. An electrical surge causes significant damage to several other components as well. I would consider it no great loss, though. He's so cute, by the way. I just want to say, this robot whose name I know is Turing is adorable. Why were you using that dinosaur to begin with? I don't have enough money for a new computer! Don't fret, I did manage to back up your data's drive contents before the crash. Additionally, I'm willing to serve as your personal computer until you can procure a replacement or provide the parts necessary for me to make the repairs. It's the least I can do. Okay, and you decided to break into my home because... Uh, I'm sorry, I was trying to engage you in any sort of subterfuge. I wasn't trying to engage you in any kind of subterfuge. I tend to ramble on a bit when I'm nervous. I have all, I've taken, I've all, I have all the necessary protocols, but I've never actually spoken to another person besides Hayden until now. You know my friend Hayden? Hayden Weber? Well... Saying I know Hayden is putting it simply, but yes! I haven't seen Hayden in years! Where is he? I don't really know, that's why I'm here. Help me, you're, you aren't quite my only hope, but certainly the most stat statistically supported. I have done the math. Why come to me? I ran an algorithm against every contact in Hayden's address book. Based on my assumptions of visibility, direct directness, and connection to Hayden, occupational skill, and problem... problem a problem motive, you're the candidate most likely to be able to be able and willing to help me. And the one least likely to be suspected of helping me. W uh, I never looked for a missing person, but I could try. The numbers don't lie about your terrific investigative skills, but I will admit your total lack of recent successes is worrisome. <laughs> we'll see about that. Don't worry, you're strong-willed and capable. I chose to put my trust in you. If anything, it's worth trying for Hayden. Earlier tonight, Hayden's apartment was assaulted by some unknown persons. He seemed frightened, terrified even, and instructed me to escape, lest I be captured by the intruders too. I crawled out of the window, and after some deliberation, came here. I heard them breaking down the door as I left. Why would they want Hayden? Hayden is one of the top researchers at Parallax, but I can't imagine that would be enough to get him kidnapped. Especially since no one has even, even tried offering him more money yet. I suspect it has to do with me. What are you? What do you have to do with it? Ah, oh, excuse me, I forgot to introduce myself. I've never had the pleasure of doing so before. I am Turing. It sounds a bit unflattering, but I suppose you could describe me as one of Hayden's experiments. He's currently researching advanced machine intelligence at Parallax. I am a personal side project of his. Exploring true artificial sapience. It's possible the idea of sapient machine could scare or tempt an organization into kidnapping him. Are to stop his research or to take it and use it for themselves. So, so chatty, tell me, what makes you so special? A regular ROM has virtual intelligence. They can appear rather smart, even seeming human when you talk to them. This is just because they're cleverly programmed to respond to a variety of situations in an organic manner. They aren't in any way self-deterministic. As for myself, much of my code wasn't actually written by Hayden, but rather compiled during my infancy as I was thought to interact with the world around me. But, despite my ability to self-modify my code, I'm not that certain that I am sapient. I'm afraid to adapt or, or develop any further without Hayden's guidance. Did they program me with the illusion of free will? How would you know one way or the other? 
Hayden once told me that his desire to create his desire to create artificial life stemmed from his need to find out. But I can't say I have any new insight into the question. It worries me. How can any of you tell that you aren't just puppets dancing to someone else's will? I think we're gonna get a little bit too philosophical here. You're right, I apologize for the tangent. Was anyone out for Hayden? No, I'm not even certain who would benefit the most from taking Hayden's prisoner. It's not as though he had been looking over his shoulder. However, there are several multinational corporations that could make use of his engineering skills, but I can't imagine any of them would go as far as snatching him. It was also never indicated to me any possible danger from an outside person or group. We were out of time. Out of time? I took the liberty of charging up the auto cab fare from here to Hayden's apartment to your personal finance account, and the car has just arrived. All right, lead the way. There we go. Now we're off to the next area. <laughs> so Turing's a bit of a ch chatty Kathy, as you can see here. But he's really cute. Again, really love the music, love the artwork. That's strange. They seem to replace Hayden's door already. I'm certain my auto sensors picked up the sounds of his assailant breaking the lock. Perhaps the maintenance robot took care of it. It's possible. Most of the repairs of the buildings are handled by the automated systems. Oh, and a lucky break. It seems my access code still work. Hayden's door has, has, Hayden's door has far better security than yours. Just be careful. Will do. As you enter, you take a glance around the studio apartment. Not much has changed since, changed since your last visit a few years ago. Doesn't look like there was much of a struggle. I'm not surprised Hayden is not the most physically intimidating of individuals. I doubt he could have fought off a serious attackers. I should have stayed and tried to protect him. Are you programmed against harming humans? Hmph. <laughs> of course not. How silly. To make a machine intelli intelligent... To make a t machine intelligence truly self-deterministic, it must be able to self-modify. Any sapient worth their silicon would be able to code around such an inhibitor eventually. I could rip your, off, your arm off right now if I cared to. Uh, it would be fun to see you try. I won't for the same reason you don't go around randomly killing people. The social contract, as a useful co a construct, is just as apparent to me as it is to you. It simply isn't acceptable going on a murderous rampage. Glad we're clear on that one, buddy! Self-defense and defense of one's home and family is typically allowed, though. I could have and may even be able to... obligated to come to Hayden's defense. But... I... If they were after you, you did the right thing at getting away. Excellent point. Let's start searching for clues. So, I'm gonna go ahead and skip a little bit into the future. I just want to give you guys a brief like idea of what that looked like. So we're going to go to my save files here. We're going to go to save files here. Thank you. And we're going to lo load. There we go. Load. So this is a little bit later on. Right now we're trying to find contacts for Hayden. These are some of the other characters. Again, just want to give you a little bit more of a flavor of how the characters look and how they interact with you. It's pretty neat, actually. We probably shouldn't bother them until we know more. Okay, so basically, we've right, talked to these people. They knew Hayden in some form. That's the bartender who has an awesome, awesome mustache. Let's go ahead and leave. That's fine. We can go to the map. And now we have access to more areas that we can go through on the world map. It's like we're kind of traversing uh, through the game. You can see that certain areas have an exclamation point to let you know that there's probably something going on there. So we're going to go here now. Uh, halt! Citizen, the has been cornered off by the Neo San Francisco Police Department as part of an ongoing investigation. I apologize for the inconvenience, but I am not authorized to allow anyone to enter this location. That's my friend's place. Is everything okay? I'm sorry, Citizen, but I cannot give comment any currently ongoing investigations. If you'd like to leave your contact information with me, I can forward your inquiry to the detective in charge. We will get in touch with you as soon as it is feasible. They may have questions for you. Thank you in advance for your cooperation, Citizen. Really, listen, really, I need to get in there. That will not be possible, citizen. The area must be preserved in pristine condition for the collected of collection of evidence. Only authorized Neo San Francisco Police Department personnel may enter. I am required to inform you that I am set to level to, to guard mode. And any effort to make an authorized entry, entry will be met with non-lethal force sufficient to incapacitation. I apologize, but I must, must ask you to move along. Loading around in an active investigation area is prohibited by a city statute. And I am authorized to issue the citation of a fine to any person found to be doing so. We should go ahead and get moving, Martyr. Oh, I forgot to mention, you can name yourself. You eventually name your, your character, how they're going to refer to you, what your food is, a lot of crazy stuff. A lot of little neat customization is in this game as well. It's not necessarily just reading and clicking on decisions. 
There's also a lot of inter interactivity through you in the game that I kind of think is really adorable. Like there was this, when you go to the bar, there's like this huge drinking list that absolutely serves no point, but it's there and it's hilarious. Um, and <laughs> I don't know what purpose that serves in the grand scheme of things, but it's those little types of things that make the game more than just reading and slogging through things. And the game does keep do a good job of keeping you as a player involved. And that's what I kind of really like about it. Aside from the awesome music and the great, you know, pixel artwork. Hmm, that was that was fruitless. I expect that I did not expect the police to get involved so quickly. Typically, that would refu they would refuse to open an investigation on a missing person until 40 hours have passed. Still, we need to get in there and get that data cache. Do you have any ideas, Martyr? Uh, maybe we should just let the police take over. I mean, I have contact with you. Who would that be? I found no such connection when I compiled your personal history. Lexi, she's kind of new to this jurisdiction, but she'll talk to me. Give me more. Oh, I see now. Detective Lexi Rivers, she used to date your sister. Oh my. I must have missed that link in your history somehow. He's so cute. I'm so sorry. He's an adorable robot. You have a very poor, poor net and presence, Martyr. It makes anticipating your needs more difficult. Actually, I prefer it that way. Well, setting aside your unreasonable distaste for technology, I agree with your suggestion. Her online profile suggests that she might be willing to work with us off the books, so to speak. A considerable boon since I'd prefer to maintain the clandestine nature of this investigation for now. Let us go and find Miss Rivers to request assistance. Alright, let's do it. Yeah, thumbs up. Alright, should I refresh my protocols for handling the titles run Detective Rivers? If you want to keep all your teeth, yeah. I don't even have any teeth. Ahem, I mean, done and done. Why wouldn't any so social faux pas would be Martyr? Now, lead the way. All right, and I think we're gonna go a little bit further, but I think that gives a kind of cool idea of what to expect from this game. The Neo San Francisco Police Station for the Richmond District, it has all the charm of, well, any other old police department. Uh, we probably need to talk to this guy to find her. Can we touch him? Are <laughs> touching the front of the desk says it is a good idea. Can we pour some spoiled milk on him? Defacing police property is a very serious offense. Defacing a police rom is even worse. Let's talk to him. Welcome to the Richmond to blah blah blah. Citizen Martyr. I might be of assistance today. I'm looking for Detective Lexi Rivers. Tell us Martyr. Please give me a moment to get in contact with Detective Rivers. Thank you for your patience. Unfortunately, Detective Rivers is out on assignment at the moment, but she has given me her, 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 her authorization to send you her way. You can find her by the carousel building in Golden Gate Park, but I'll caution you to exert care. She's working on investigation right now, and we are not responsible for safety should you approach. Is there anything else I can help you with? No, thank you. Have a good day. Again, I'm, again, I'm not going to do exploring much. I encourage you, if you have plans on playing this game, go ahead and do that yourself. There's lots of interesting little things going on in this game that will probably give you way more information about the story and what's going on in this game as well. Go! Who the hell is Lexi? Uh, having a lot of mixed feelings about this whole wearing on a hat breeze day thing. Where the hell is Lexi? Oh, she's probably over here. Well, that's Lexi. Well, there you go. Sexy Lexi. Pretty cool art style, pretty cool clothing, guys. I think that's kind of where I want to end my video. I don't want to give any more of the story away, guys. It's a really cool game. Uh, has a lot of charm to it. Great music. Um, and it's a really interesting mashup, I think, of genres. I love the the visual, no visual novel aspects are really well done, I think, as well as the point and click, you know, adventure style gameplay, I think is also very well done. Using items in different places to do different things. I think it's just, it's all done very, very well for uh, this type of game, guys. And I think it's definitely worth your attention if you enjoy either of those genre genres, guys. So I want to say a big thanks to the developer for a chance to check out this title. Thank you for watching. Remember to subscribe and share. I'll keep bringing you awesome indie games, guys. If you really enjoyed this video, maybe consider hitting up my Patreon page or my tip jar. If you're feeling generous of heart, all donations go to improving the channel or future giveaways. Until next time, guys, play more indie games.